Eugene Jarvis has returned with yet another game, this time an arcade game that has been brought to Switch. And there's quite some history here, uh, but I wanted to discuss this with a fellow fan of this particular series, Alex Vitalik. Yeah, I like the cruising <laughs> yeah. games, John. I think they've got beats that I love, gameplay that's fast and arcadey and ultra silly. And uh, this seems like it's kind of that title, isn't it, John? It's very similar to the old. It is. This is a game that warms my heart. I mean, this feels like an old Midway game. And I mean that in the best possible way. I mean, obviously, Eugene Jarvis, one of the industry legends behind Robotron, Defender, Narc, Smash TV, the Cruisin' series, so many more things. Uh, he started a studio, Raw Thrills, and they've still been out there making arcade games for years. And they put out Cruise and Blast a few years ago. I've seen it once or twice in the arcades, and it's good. Uh, and they ported it to Switch, which was an unexpected announcement. It even has a physical release, which is just awesome. Um, so I guess the first thing to talk about is the game itself, as well as the wild visual design. Because, I mean, you know the classic cruising games, right? Yeah, of course. You know, uh, at least from the era it comes back in, it's, you know, early 3D rendering. So there's still a lot of sprite work in a, a lot of these games back in the day. But it was generally bright colors, uh, various locales across the world. And yeah, just kind of that 90s flair. It definitely is a game that could really only exist in the 90s when you look at it now in terms of design and things like that. And based upon what you've been showing, I've been watching a lot of the footage you've been sending me here. Um, it is trying to actually retain that classic cruising look in a lot of ways, but it, it's still like modern rendering is being thrown into the mix here. There's a lot of bloom, for example, spread across the environment. The colors are riotous. Like there's so many colors here to the point of garishness. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's some other things like, you know, specular reflections on cars. It, it seems like a game that was done modern in the style of the old. It, it is pretty interesting. Exactly. I agree. And it's funny you mentioned cruising all about the world because cruising USA was not. It was about the yeah, USA only. A, but that's <laughs> the thing. The, the series became increasingly... Uh, over the top with each entry. And this one actually does feel like a follow-up to Cruisin' Exotica in some ways. Uh, I think it's much better than Cruisin' on the Wii, by the way, which uh, is kind of an <laughs> ugly game. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of that one. This actually yeah. feels like a return to form. And you're right. It's it's a visually colorful, crazy-looking game. Uh, and some of the choices that they've made are really interesting. Like, taken in a vacuum you'd be like oh why would you do that like they, they go really heavy <laughs> on the, like the cube maps for instance and they're not super high res and they don't really correspond exactly to the environment but and usually when you use that you would kind of you know be a little bit gentle Try to hide it a little bit yeah but here it's just like they have like wet streets that are like almost near like <laughs> at times and like crazy glass buildings and everything uh but it actually works you go so fast and just I love seeing this. This feels to me like a Dreamcast game uh, with more modern techniques. You know what I mean? That's like, a really good way to it, put it, it feels like a Dreamcast game from like 2000, 2001, even, or early 2001 before the Dreamcast was dead. Uh, <laughs> and I love that. I mean, this London level, for instance, is a perfect example of what I love about the insanity. Like, right away, the Ferris wheel is rolling across the street. <laughs> <laughs> like the cars are falling off the Ferris wheel onto the road. You're dodging through the spokes of this thing. And then at one point you go ramping off and you land on a train and you're racing across the train. And then there comes the Ferris wheel again. And, you know, or, or the part where like you're just driving along, you go down a huge mountain with this gigantic vista. And then like the whole ground explodes apart. And, you know, it's just, I love this stuff. That's what makes it. Great. I mean, this is a game where your car can pop wheelies and go on its side and yeah. flips over and always lands on its wheels again. Double tap it, it, the accelerator. Kind of you go you go wheelie everywhere. So the thing is, though, <laughs> as it's so busy, I actually didn't expect a lot in terms of technical performance on Switch, right? Yeah, to me, same. this looked like a 20 to 30 FPS game, possibly at like 900p or something. Especially since this is coming from an arcade, which from uh, what you've told me is essentially a PC. So it's a PC port, essentially. As best as I can figure out, yes. As best as John can figure out. It's like essentially something that was a lot higher end than the Switch, and this is being ported down to as well. So the, the challenge is there. But in a, in a surprise turnaround, they've actually brought the goods here. So in docked mode, it's actually a full 1080p. And in portable, you get 720p. Mm -hmm. 
So essentially they're offering the highest resolutions that the Switch can support. And that's nothing compared to the other big consoles, I guess you could say. But honestly, for Switch, for a third party game like this, it's unusual. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, usually third party games uh, focus a lot less on this arcade experience anyways, you know, and their their ports from other platforms. So they usually downgrade the res upgrade the post-processing a whole bunch and spend their budget elsewhere. And it's really nice to actually see a game targeting native on Switch here. Yeah, and it looks it looks incredible in portable mode especially. It's very, very crisp on that screen. So um, good on them for that. It's it's a perfect looking game for the Switch. The, the super vibrant arcadey design and the clean image quality, it works really well. Like, um, yeah. so that's good. Uh, but obviously, there are some caveats there, and that's namely when we get to performance. But the performance is a weird one. So, by and large, the game does actually try to run at 60 frames per second. And I would say it gets there a good, a good majority of the time. Um, but there are specific things that cause the frame, rates, the frame rate to dip. Um, so, if I were to just take a guess, what I know about the Switch. <laughs> uh, 1080p... In a game with a lot of flashing stuff here and there, it's probably alpha effect related, John. Ding, ding, Is ding, it? ding, ding. Yes, the, uh, <laughs> the the poor memory bandwidth on the Switch is shining through uh, brilliantly here. Essentially, every time you get some sort of like alpha effects right up close to the camera, uh, it drops the frame rate temporarily. And this is kind of an issue because specifically you have these, these uh, nitrous that you can use you can you can trigger <laughs> it anytime you hit the, the left trigger oh uh, the problem is is they insist on doing this full screen flame effect and every time you get this little parabola on the graph as you see it's very consistent yeah. so that specific effect tanks the huh. frame rate every single time to the point where i really have to wonder why they felt the need to keep it i mean i know it's technically the <laughs> blast it puts the blast in cruise and blast but uh, I feel like you look at that and you think they really should have designed that effect specifically differently because it does seem to hurt, agree. hurt the frame rate every single time. Yeah, and if it's a you know, core part of the game, having the frame rate dip every single time you use the core part of the game isn't very cool. And, you know, you and I were talking about this before it started. I uh, started this video. Um, they could just, you know, quarter the resolution of it, make it look a little different, you know, so, so maybe even not even have it necessarily if it's all about actually having a more consistent performance because it's not a huge part of the game actually this visual effect it's it's just there you know it's just there it's exactly it's what it does not how it looks that defines the game and that definitely could have used some changing uh that's not to say it's 100 percent perfect elsewhere but most of the other drops are kind of like very brief into like 58 57 mm -hmm. uh, when things are a little bit busy um but you know Honestly, it's so like it's not 100% stable as I would have liked, but it's good enough and unexpectedly stable for the Switch, I would say. So, one thing that I imagine is do you think this game, if it didn't target 1080p, even though that is really nice, do you think it would manage like a locked 60 at something like 900p? Um, it's hard to say if it would actually get locked, but mm -hmm. I suspect it would help. Okay. Uh, so. And, but curiously, oh, another thing I guess I should mention um, is that the game actually supports split screen. <laughs> That's rare. So effectively, they just allow the frame rate to kind of run crazy, I guess you could say. Just, you know, so first let's look at two player split screen here. And as you can see, mm -hmm. it still runs uncapped, uh, but it does not get close to holding 60 FPS at all. Uh, but it's, you know, it's completely playable, I guess. It just doesn't look that smooth. Uh, in four player split screen though, my first impression was, oh, they put in a 30 FPS cap here. It's just a little bit unstable, but it turns out that the frame rate is also unlocked in that mode as well. It's just even lower as you would expect, you know, trying to do native 1080p with four player split screen, not the easiest thing. They probably should have just put in a frame rate cap for these two modes, I feel. Um, so that's kind of the, the word on docked performance. How is it in, uh portable then well so that's the thing um essentially uh as you would expect as we've seen in other switch games it's sort of consistent where when you render to a lower resolution it's less harsh on memory bandwidth mm -hmm. uh, and so it's better it's not perfect either you still get those dips but the dips are less significant and it actually winds up looking quite smooth overall i would say that's pretty cool. to the point where 
it's actually one of the most striking games I've seen on Switch because of the fact that it's native resolution to the panel and the fact that the frame rate's pretty good most of the time. Uh, it winds up looking awesome, I would say. So portable mode is great. And you know, you get similar results in the split screen as well when doing portable as you would expect. Uh, and I should also note for the capture of the split screen mode, um, I didn't have enough people around obviously to do <laughs> no. the full test, but the game pushes, if you don't touch the controller, the other cars all just start driving forward anyway. So that's why they're just kind of chaotically driving into stuff <laughs> because that's just, that's just how it is. <laughs> it's cruising. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that, that's the state of performance. That's actually sounds pretty good in the end. So I have a question for you. I am someone who likes the cruising games of old and you know, we're, we're fans of the series. Who, who would you recommend this game to in the Switch audience based upon, you know, it's not just for the nostalgia people. Would you recommend this to people who are interested in other types of games? I would. I would. Uh, you know, if you've enjoyed Mario Kart games or sort of more arcade racing games in general, it's definitely worth picking up. Uh, mm -hmm. And mechanically, I do think it is significantly more refined than the old cruising games. I mean, this <laughs> actually has like a proper drift system. Uh, it's the kind yeah. where as you drift, you sort of... Uh, fill up a meter and if you unleash it at the right time you get a boost out of the drift uh, which is satisfying so you know it actually plays better than the old cruising games and it runs smoother nice. of course so it, it feels like a proper evolution and yeah i don't know I, i'm really impressed with that so i feel like anybody that enjoys fun colorful racing games uh something that's a little bit less serious <laughs> than, no. than we have today <laughs> Like and this <laughs> occupies, so th this made me think this occupies a very different space. Like I love arcade racers. I always say that, but they're not all the same. Uh, this is not a competitor for Ridge Racer or Daytona. This is its own mm -hmm. thing. And this is very midway. I mean, this is Hydra Thunder, Cruisin', the Rush series. It kind of subscribes to that kind of thing. Uh, but even more like insane, if you will, just the track design. Mm -hmm. And I love having tracks like adventure racing is how I might describe it. These tracks nice. where there's just stuff happening all the time. Uh, it feels great. And it's always satisfying to go ramping off of like a giant uh, mountain. And you get this huge <laughs> view of the terrain below. And the camera work is very dynamic as well. Pulling in and out depending on what's going on. Uh, it just feels very vibrant, fun. The UI is great as well, by the way. And on top of mm -hmm. all of this, you can check out the credits, right? And I was shocked to see just how tiny the development team was. It's so small that, I mean, to me, it basically looks like the kind of credits you would have expected to see in a 90s arcade game. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. So the whole thing just feels like, you know, here's this arcade game. It came over to Switch. The port's pretty good. Uh, it takes me back, but also it's fun and, and it stands out on its own. And as a result, that's exactly why I wanted to make this very quick little video. It's just to talk about the game a little bit and showcase why it's actually an awesome release on the Switch. Well, you've excited me, and I hope they consider a PC port in the future. That would be great, because <laughs> yeah, that would that would solve any remaining technical issues, and you could crank it up. And honestly, with the amount of reflections they have going on here, like it would it never awesome. happen. But man, can you imagine ray tracing in this? <laughs> ray tracing, good lord, blast! Uh, I'll take my check. I'll take my check. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Uh, but anyway, thanks for joining me for this quick discussion, Alex. I do appreciate it. As always. Uh, and if you guys enjoyed this video, do check out Cruisin' Blast. This was even a special case because uh, I actually bought the game myself on physical cartridge. <laughs> we didn't get a review code for this. I just liked playing it so much that I'm like, okay, I, I need to do a video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick look and do check it out. Uh, and if you did enjoy it, be sure to like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, find us over on Twitter, and check out our Patreon. If you want to get the direct feed footage of this and other videos, as well as come hang out in our Discord community. And until next time, this is John and Alex signing off and saying... Cruise it! Cruise blast!